bringing the streets to the classroom. How local high schools should think about teaching a course in violence, in the history of violence in the city of Philadelphia. I'm Rob Bell, and this is anti-crime television. Well, I think um, at some point we need to start thinking outside of the box in terms of how we educate people about the violence that is occurring in the city of Philadelphia. One of the things that I always talk about is it being a mindset. It's not so much about uh, people having handguns, and although that is a great and a big part of it, it is to me more about people having a mindset and understanding about uh, what violence does to their communities, how violence impacts families, and how the proliferation of violence across not only the city of Philadelphia, but across the nation has a dramatic impact on how we live as people. And particularly in the black community, violence seems to just continue to get out of control. So one of the things that I've been thinking about of late is if we are going to change the mindset of how people think about violence, we need to start with the young people. And, you know, one of the things that um, we can do uh, as people who want to change the mindset of young people when it comes to violence is start to educate them about that. We educate our kids about everything else in school. You know, definitely reading, writing, and arithmetic. And, you know, it's all in trying to prepare them for the real world. And, you know, we definitely have to do that. Uh, the real world is real. And from an educational standpoint, we do have to prepare our young people for the real world. But at the same time, I think school has gotten away from the realities of the world. One of the realities of the world, especially in, in the communities in which African-American young people live, is violence. And as educators and as institutions of education, I think it is our responsibility to educate our young people about how to stop the violence. So how do we create this mindset in stopping the violence? Philadelphia has a long history of violence, and I don't think our young people really understand the history of violence in Philadelphia. Uh, and if they did, then maybe they would think twice about the violence that they um, see or the violence that they themselves are um, putting on uh, people in our communities. And they always say when you understand your history, then you have a better understanding of where you're going. So I have a kind of outside of the box and a unique idea of maybe having a course and developing a curriculum for violence in our school district. Not to teach people how to be violent, but to teach people how to be anti-violent by teaching them, you know, what happens when people commit violent acts. Why not have a course to teach young people uh, what happens when you commit or other people commit violent acts with handguns? Do they really understand uh, the backlash of someone getting shot? Do they understand that when you uh, are the perpetrator of a crime with a handgun, the possibility of you going to jail for five years or more are real? Do they really understand that when you shoot someone, you're shooting a family member and what that does to that family? It's devastating. Um, it's devastating for the family. It's devastating for the community. It's devastating for the community hospitals that's, that have to continually take these folks into their trauma centers and try to save their lives. Uh, it's devastating uh, all, all the way around. And as a perpetrator of a crime with a handgun, 
you, you are going to go to jail for a long, long time. So three seconds of a crazy decision that you make to shoot somebody may turn out to be a pitfall for you for the rest of your life. And I think if we have uh, educators teaching young people and kind of drumming that into their head on a daily basis, they would think twice about committing the crimes that they do out there. Um, it also has a devastating effect on people's ability to move forward. As, again, the perpetrator of a violent crime with a handgun, you can't move forward because you're in jail. As the uh, uh, victim of a violent crime, you're either going to be uh, maimed or even killed. And so, obviously, you can't move forward. And so, you know, again, it has a dramatic impact on people's lives in the community. And I think young people have to be educated to that uh, almost on a daily basis in the same way that they're educated with reading, writing, and arithmetic. So I think, you know, within the course or within the curriculum of teaching uh, violence, or should I say anti-violence in school, those are some of the things that need to be discussed. The other thing that uh, should become a project as a, a part of that curriculum is to demand and challenge young people to come up with ideas as to what they would do to stop the violent crime that happens in our communities. They are often right there at the pulse of what happens. The young people in our community know the people who are out there committing those crimes. The young people who live in our community almost know when those crimes are going to happen, and they, uh, in many cases, can probably prevent them, you know, if they are of the mindset to do so. But if they don't have any adults, if they don't have any uh, mature people that's kind of pumping this information into their heads, then they don't know what direction that they need to go in. And so there has to be some kind of uh, uh, direction that we should be leading our young people in in a positive way to get them to understand that this proliferation of violence is just getting out of control. We cannot continue to live in communities like this. And so, again, the educational part of that in this curriculum should be enforced. And then lastly... I think those courses should be taught by police officers. And the reason why I say that is because if you want to bridge the gap between law enforcement and a community, then you have to create a situation where people start to gain the trust of our police officers that police our community. You have to create a situation where you gain the trust from our police officers of the people in our community. And what better way to help solve that issue by putting both the community and police officers together in a classroom to where they can exchange ideas, share information, provide information, and educate each other about what can be done to stop the violence in our communities. So police officers should be the one uh, uh, should be the ones, I'm sorry, that, that teach that course. You will be surprised over a period of time how that relationship would develop between police officers and young people. Oh, yeah, in the beginning, it's going to be rocky. People, uh, Young people are not going to trust the police. The police are going to get frustrated with the young people. But just like any other situation, over a period of time, when you spend enough time with each other, at some point, the light goes on. At some point, the bond begins to occur. And when that happens, um, it starts to generate the kind of harmonious situations that we need to happen between the police and the community. 
And if we can create what we call the snowball effect with a situation like that where our young people begin to trust the police, the police begin to trust our young people, uh, the police take that back to their colleagues, young people take that back to their friends, and now we have a situation where we are at least attempting to start a dialogue to figure out how we can stop all this violence that's occurring in our community. So um, in closing, I think the Philadelphia school district should seriously consider creating a curriculum of anti-violence and teaching a course throughout the year for our young people and how we can stop the violence in Philadelphia. This is Rob Bell, and this is Anti-Crime TV.